Everyone thinks they know what the first computer looked like. A room-sized machine filled with glowing vacuum tubes, cables snaking across the floor, and giant whirring fans keeping it alive. But what if I told you that this popular image is completely wrong? That what most people picture as the first computer is only part of the story? Get ready to challenge everything you thought you knew, because today, we're uncovering the real, shocking truth about the machine that truly started it all. So sit down, relax, and ensure you watch till the end. To understand where the story begins, we have to go back, far back, to a time when even the concept of a machine that could think was unimaginable. Picture ancient merchants standing in bustling markets of Mesopotamia thousands of years ago, keeping track of trade, debt, and harvest. How did they calculate? Not with machines, but with beads sliding across a wooden frame. The abacus. Simple, practical, and revolutionary for its time. But here's the catch. It wasn't a computer. Not even close. It was a tool, but a tool that required a human brain to operate, to interpret, to reason. It had no independence, no logic of its own. Fast forward centuries later, and thinkers began inventing clever devices like Napier's bones and the slide rule, marvels of mechanical ingenuity. They simplified calculations, made mathematics faster, and in some ways they foreshadowed the machines to come. But once again, the key element was missing. They couldn't make decisions, they couldn't store instructions, they couldn't adapt, they weren't computers, they were calculators. Helpful, yes, but not transformative. So what separates a calculator from a true computer? The difference lies in autonomy. A calculator needs a person to press every button, guide every step. A computer can hold memory, follow logical instructions, and perform operations on its own once programmed. And that definition, simple yet powerful, sets the stage for our journey. The first great leap toward this dream came not from the 20th century, but the 19th. Enter Charles Babbage, a brilliant yet eccentric English mathematician. Imagine London in the 1830s, a city buzzing with industrial revolution, steam engines chugging, railroads expanding, science and engineering breaking boundaries. In this environment, Babbage dreamed of something beyond even the most advanced technology of his time. He envisioned a machine, the analytical engine, that could do more than just crunch numbers. It could follow instructions, store information, even branch conditionally. Essentially, it could think in its own mechanical way. Babbage's sketches described gears, levers, and punch cards that could tell the machine what to do. For the first time, the foundations of modern computing appeared on paper. And then came Ada Lovelace, the daughter of the poet Lord Byron, and a mind far ahead of her age. She looked at Babbage's plans and saw something extraordinary. To her, the analytical engine wasn't just about numbers, it was about possibility. She predicted it could create music, compose art, and process symbols. In many ways, she became the world's first computer programmer, writing detailed notes that described algorithms for a machine that didn't yet exist. But here's the twist. As visionary as Babbage and Ada were, their analytical engine was never built. It remained a dream, a concept locked in drawings and notebooks. Which leads us to the burning question. If it was never constructed, can it truly be the first computer? Or does the crown belong elsewhere? Decades later, another contender entered the stage. In Germany, on the eve of World War II, Konrad Zuse was working in near isolation. Unlike Babbage, Zuse built something real, something tangible. His machine, the Z3, constructed in 1941, used electromechanical relays, processed binary arithmetic, and was programmable. In other words, it could follow instructions fed to it, and it didn't need a human to guide each calculation step by step. This was a massive leap forward. Many historians argue that Zeus's Z3 deserves the title of the first programmable computer. But across the Atlantic, in the United States, another machine was being born in a humble basement in Iowa. The Atanasoff Berry Computer, or ABC, built by John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry, was experimenting with something different. 
electronic components, binary arithmetic, and regenerative memory. Although not fully programmable like Zeus's machine, the ABC was an undeniable pioneer. It introduced critical innovations that shaped what came next. The story of the ABC is almost cinematic. Picture a Tanisov, a physics professor frustrated by endless manual calculations. One winter night, he drove out into the cold Iowa plains, and as he sat in his car staring into the distance, the concept of his electronic computer crystallized in his mind. From that moment, he began to design a machine unlike anything seen before, one that replaced clunky mechanical gears with electronic circuits and capacitors. With Clifford Berry, his brilliant student, Atnasov spent years soldering, wiring, and testing in that small basement. Though modest in scale, their machine planted the seeds for the digital revolution. Yet history is never clean. For decades, a bitter legal battle raged in the U.S. over who invented the computer first. Atnasov fought to have his contributions recognized, while later machines like the ENIAC gained worldwide fame. This raises a haunting question. Does first mean being first conceptually, first practically, or first legally recognized? The waters grow murky. And then comes the ENIAC. If you close your eyes and picture a gigantic room filled wall to wall with cables, dials, and the humming of thousands of vacuum tubes, that's the ENIAC. Completed in 1945, it was a monster of engineering. It could compute faster than anything before it, performing calculations in seconds that would take humans weeks. The U.S. Army used it for ballistics, trajectory charts, and nuclear research. This was the machine that seared itself into the public imagination as the first computer. The ENIAC was massive, nearly 30 tons with over 17,000 vacuum tubes glowing like tiny light bulbs. It consumed so much electricity that when it powered up, the lights in Philadelphia reportedly dimmed. Operators, many of them women, worked tirelessly to set up problems, crawling through panels of cables and switches. In some ways, ENIAC was as much a spectacle as it was a scientific marvel. But was it the first true computer? Here's the catch. ENIAC wasn't programmable in the way we think today. To change its instructions, engineers had to physically rewire the machine. There was no stored program inside it, no flexibility in memory to hold both data and instructions. ENIAC was dazzling, but it wasn't yet the true breakthrough. That breakthrough came with a man named John von Neumann. In 1945, he published a paper that would become the blueprint of modern computing. His architecture introduced the idea of a stored program, that a computer could hold both data and instructions in the same memory. This wasn't just an improvement. It was the foundation for every digital computer built since. Imagine if ENIAC was like a player piano, with instructions fixed in its hardware, then von Neumann's idea turned the piano into a musician capable of learning any new song instantly. That's how radical this shift was. And soon, von Neumann's vision came to life. The Manchester Baby, developed in 1948 in the UK, was the first machine to successfully run a stored program. Its very first program? A simple task to find the highest factor of a number. Modest, perhaps, but revolutionary. For the first time, a machine wasn't just a calculator on steroids. It was a true computer, as we know it today. Soon after came the EDSAC in Cambridge, another pioneer of this architecture. Unlike the baby, which was more of an experimental proof, EDSAC was practical and usable by researchers, making it the first machine that truly resembled what modern computing would become. The development of EDSAC opened doors. Scientists could now write programs stored in memory, reuse them, and build more complex applications. It was the beginning of software, of programming as a discipline, of computers as general-purpose machines rather than specialized number crunchers. So, after all this suspense, where does that leave us? Was the first computer Babbage's dream that never materialized? Zeus's electromechanical Z3, Atnasov's binary ABC, the monumental ENIAC, or was it truly the Manchester Baby or EDSAC which implemented the architecture we still use today?
The answer depends on how we define computer. If we mean the first concept, credit goes to Babbage and Ada Lovelace. If we mean the first programmable electromechanical machine, then Zeus's Z3 claims the crown. If we mean the first electronic digital architecture, at Nassau and Barry take the prize. But if we mean the first computer in the modern sense, the one that directly fathered today's laptops and smartphones, then it was the Manchester Baby and the EDSAC that finally brought the dream to life. And maybe that's the real lesson. The story of the first computer isn't about a single genius or a single machine. It's a relay race across centuries, ideas passing from merchants with abacuses to dreamers like Babbage and Ada, to wartime engineers, and finally to the visionaries who gave us the architecture we still rely on today. The first computer wasn't born in one moment. It was built, piece by piece, across time, by countless minds daring to imagine what machines could do. Think of it like a symphony. Each inventor added a note, sometimes faint, sometimes thunderous, until the full melody of modern computing finally played. The abacus makers, the mathematicians, the tinkerers, the dreamers, all their notes echo inside the devices we use today. So the next time you open your laptop or pull out your phone, remember, you're holding the legacy of not one, but many first computers. And the real truth? The story isn't over yet, because the definition of a computer is still evolving. Quantum computers are now on the horizon, threatening to redefine everything we thought possible. And just maybe, a hundred years from now, someone will look back at our machines and ask, but were those really the first true computers? By the way, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to InventionFlex and check out the next recommended video waiting for you here on the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.